proper multi-curve, we have already done a lot of multi-curve interest rate modeling, but uh, now we do that more, uh, more formally. Essentially, sorry about this, Essentially, let us revise a few passages of what we have already seen about multicurve. We have seen that uh, the frappe off can be replicated in classical interest rate modeling, getting this price, and uh, uh, this price leads to us to, 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 to see that the equilibrium rate of a fra can be expressed in terms of a bond ratio. Notice that we could have reached this result even without using a replication, but using also the, the mathematics that we have learned this morning. Essentially, start from pricing a, a, um, a forward rate agreement uh, uh, as an expectation of its payoff. Now you know that you can get rid of the stochastic discount factor uh, with a change of measure. Then you impose this to be equal to zero to find the equilibrium rate. You erase P and you, re you erase tau I and you realize that uh, the, the, the equilibrium level of K is just expectation under the TI forward measure of the future LIBOR rate that appears in the payoff. But now, uh, if you remember that the future LIBOR rate can be written in terms of bond in this way that if you look shows that this guy is nothing other than a tradable asset divided by the numeraire under which you are taking expectation guys this is a martingale so the expectation of this is the same expression putting zero in the place of t everywhere, like it happens with every martingale. But so we have found again a result such that the equilibrium rate of uh, a fra that is actually also expressed as forward, forward expectation of the future LIBOR, thanks to the, the properties of forward expectation is, can always be expressed as a ratio of bonds. But we know that the replication is no more valid from 9 of August. So what can we do, essentially? For understanding what can we do to go on modeling, it's important to understand what has really changed in our pricing problem. You know, formally, we still have to price this payoff. In the past, we interpreted our discounting as a risk-free discounting and our underlying as a risk-free future spot rate. Now we have understood that there is credit risk in the market. So is the point that we have to move from a risk-free discounting to a discounting that takes into account, for example, risk of default of the counterparty? No because the deal is collateralized. So what has really changed in our pricing problem? Remember, as long as we interpreted both discount and the underlying as risk-free rates, and we considered the LIBOR curve, our risk-free curve, we got both information about the discounting and both information about LIBOR from, um, and um, both information about the underlying from the LIBOR curve. Now notice, is discounting still a risk-free discounting? Well, the point is that the answer is yes, because in the market approximation, forward rate agreements being collateralized are treated as risk-free. So discounting is still a risk-free discounting. Is the underlying still a risk-free spot rate? No, because we know that when there is credit risk in the interbank market, this is reflected by LIBOR. And you may say, that's surprising, because you are telling us that what has changed in the pricing problem is the underlying and not the discounting. 
But I remember back in 2008 that everyone in the market was speaking about that we had to change the discounting and moving to an OIS discounting. And no one spoke about changing the underlying. Come on, the underlying is written in the contract. Well, this is the point of view of the accountant. For the accountant, what has really changed is that you were computing your discount from a LIBOR curve, and now you have to change to an OIS curve. For the underlying, actually, it used to be called LIBOR, it's still called LIBOR. But from the model, the truth is that what has changed is the underlying from a risk-free rate to a risky rate. And in this way, it's no more consistent with discounting. That discounting has remained risk-free. Just the curve where you used to read the discounting is no more risk-free. You have to change the curve to go on getting a risk-free discount. Notice that you could have bootstrapped the right discount from OIS even before the crisis. You were using LIBOR just because OIS and LIBOR coincided, if you remember. And now, the problem is that OIS has remained at least an approximation of risk-free, while LIBOR went up and cannot be used anymore as a risk-free discount.